What's up guys, QC here, and as you can see in the title of this video, it's going to be about the Flame Dragon Bones weapon, everything that you need to know about it is going to be in this video. So basically, uh, we're going to go over all the 21 weapons, um, and also, just so you know, how to choose which weapon, depending on your game style, you know, gameplay, afterwards it's going to be like some demonstration, uh, we're going to go over all the weapons uh, in details, to explain all the you know advantage and weaknesses of each and afterwards I say for the last of course the tips and tricks uh, part where basically is some not well-known facts that you should know if you want to make you know the most out of the weapon you are gonna choose so hopefully uh, that's gonna help you all and so let's get into it all right, so the first question, and basically I'm gonna ask two questions. Depending on the answer, it's gonna help quite a bit uh, what type of weapon that gonna be uh, the best for you. So, first of all, I the first question is, do you want a one-hand weapon or two-hand weapons? I explain what I mean by that. One-hand weapon is something that you're gonna be able to use with something else, basically another item like a shield for protection or, you know, pretty much anything else, okay? Basically, you can have a second weapon in your second hand. So, compared to the two hand, which basically you have uh, only one weapon in both of your hand. I mean, there's an exception if you don't, if you want to, you know, um, avoid the penalty, which is you know the Titan effect. Let's say, just for the sake of this video, that we don't have this Titan effect. And so you're only gonna choose one weapon and you are not able to get a shield in your other weapons or you know the penalty is gonna be either level one or level two. Level one it's basically gonna reduce 25% of your attack speed and your damage dealt and the level two it's gonna be 50%. Uh, also since a one hand weapon can be more of a defensive uh, type of gameplay so it's you know to help survive beginners or early game I recommend more to go on towards the one hand but again if you want to go all in for damage strike right once at the enemy before they actually you know are able to attack you well the two hand may be what you are looking for so depending on your strategy in the first question one hand or two hand the second question is the same so do you want a close range or something more longer like a longer range there is some weapon in the game that have actually the effect of reach one basically you can hit enemy from a further distance and you know even if it's a, a close range weapon since you can hit it further than the regular weapons hit them from further away be more safe get as much distance as you can that can be also the you know the longer range uh, again depend on your strategy so i'm gonna first start with the close range one hand weapon I have to do the longer range, uh, after two hand, close range, cl and after two hand, longer range. Close range, one hand, there's only five weapons that I put there. I'm not gonna read all the stats out loud, you're gonna be able to see it for yourself right there. I'm gonna focus more on, you know, what type of strategy you can use for each, and what are the pros and cons for each, you know, what's good and bad. So the first one is the rigorous sword. The regular sword, I mean the flame dragon bone sword. Basically, it's a balanced sword, you know, decent stats. It's not the biggest, but it's not the lowest either. The only downside is there's no effect, so there's no reach one that can attack further away. It, it just basically the stats. Since it's the most balanced one, there's it's gonna be easier to you know fight in all scenarios. But if you know you're gonna you know fight in certain scenarios or your gameplay you already know how you play normally well that's when you know some specific weapon can be more you know good for uh, you it's the saber basically the saber it's uh, you know again it's a decent attack speed the attack damage is kind of low but it's mostly to survive you know the strategy that you're gonna use for them it's when you don't want to die early game it's way better um, since late game you're gonna be able to get better armor and so you're gonna be able to play a little bit more risky with your main weapon you're gonna be able to do extra damage uh, when the enemy's chest is uncovered so when there's no armor and also only when the the mob 
have uh, less than two points in armor, which is really important um, because you know even if th there's no armor, if a certain uh, mob is a little bit more tanky, you may not be able to get the bonus damage on the chest right there. It's better for the sort of five ability, sorry. Uh, because the damage absorption to help negate some of the damage basically 25% total of the damage that you should you know, get inflict gonna be negate completely it's gonna be dealt on the durability of your weapon so basically you sacrifice the durability of your weapon for your own health it's a good way to, you know to stay uh, you know alive but it's you're gonna have to change this sooner than the other weapons since the durability is going to be lower. The repair is pretty much the same. Uh, basically, it got a good attack speed. The damage though is not great once again, uh, but it does some extra damage when the enemy is completely unarmored and that it's lower than two point of armor. So it increases durability also because of the damage absorption. It's the same thing as before, 25% of total damage that you should get uh, is gonna be uh, negate instead your weapon the durability gonna take a hit is quite important it's before in the 2.8 it was only when they are on armored but now if they're naturally tanky you may not be able to get extra damage so they nerf quite a bit the saber and the repair in the you know 2.9 it's the hammer which is basically uh, okay attack speed some good damage it's uh, advanced not back, not back level two. Gonna push the enemy further away. It's gonna be able to inflict nausea when they don't have a helmet on. So that's really good uh, against the PVE. So basically against mob. But if you're trying to do some PVP with it, it's gonna suck since a helmet is like the first thing you're gonna want in a PVP match. PVE can be useful to inflict the nausea at second level. Basically, also I forgot to mention, all of the you know Flame Dragon Bones weapon uh, inflict burns and not back. But I'm not gonna say it for every single one of them. This one I said it only because it's uh, the advanced not back, it's the second level, so you punch them and they go even further away. Uh, and now the last one in this category is so it's a decent attack speed, some good damage. It's, it does 50% damage more on the undead creature. If you know you're gonna do like Battle Tower that there's a lot of undead spawner or dungeon, that there's a lot of undead, it can help you out quite a lot. Uh, it's some pretty decent stats, high stats borderline. Only problem, it's, it's all there is. There's no uh, effect going on uh, with it. So you only want to use that when you're gonna hunt for undead creature. All right, so now it's gonna be the longer range one hand weapon. Uh, I'm gonna go faster on them since there is some stuff I'm gonna save for later on. All of the flowable weapons are capable of being used close range, but it's also possible to use them long range. The only one that's the exception of this is the boomerang. Basically, it's only flowable, you cannot hit them close range. Uh, if you do, it's like you're just using your hand, so it's gonna be like one of damage. So it's not the best, it's really to be able to keep your distance. Uh, so as you can see, uh, the charge time is pretty quick. It's gonna be able to use it quickly. Uh, only thing like on that is that you only have one ammo-ish. Basically you throw it and after you don't have anything on you, need a second weapon to be able to help you while your boomerang is gonna come back. Because yes, it is gonna come back. Uh, it's like the loyalty on the Trident engine. Uh, it's, it's gonna come back to you. The throwable uh, weapons are gonna give you some bonus uh, damage when you throw it, except for this one right here. That's the dagger. The dagger, uh, good attack speed, not a great attack damage, but it gives you a bonus backstab damage. So when you hit the enemy from the back, it's gonna give you 200% more damage. So it's really good. The only downside is it's only one ammo. So if you throw it, you have nothing left. Also, there's the bug. But I'm gonna talk about it later in the video. It's one of the tips and tricks. Really be careful. This weapon of the flowable one can be really powerful if you know how to use them. But there's a huge downside to that and I'm gonna get back into it later. Here it's the axe. This one is a, a flowing axe. 
So as you can see, you can throw it, do more damage. There's a couple of ammo, and then if you throw some, as long as you have one ammo, you're gonna be able to eat and actually use it for close combat. It's always the bug, the downside. What about the little knife here, the throwing knife? It's a good attack speed, some decent attack damage, if you are someone that really like it may be useful to go for the lance basically when you're on your mount it's give you 200 percent damage you're gonna be able to hit the enemy further away from a little since you have retron but it's not worth it if you are not gonna use it on a mount this one is a spear decent attack speed good attack damage but there's no effect basically it's decent stats this one again you're gonna be able to hit from further away you don't have any special effect except that so that's it for the uh, longer range for the one hand of weapon. So now I'm gonna go in the two hand section. Basically there's two hand, him to close range or longer range. Let's do close range first. You can see only four weapons. The katana, it's a good attack speed for two hand weapons. It's like the saber, you do bonus damage when the enemy have no armor in the chest area, but it also need to be less than two armor points all of the downsides of the two hand are that they're two hand you cannot have anything else it's you know mostly to go all in in attack long sword it do a huge amount of damage but there's nothing else decent attack speed yes but you do not have another effect it's only some great uh, stats and there's a downside of two hand level one so 25 percent warhammer uh, so decent attack speed good attack damage this one is mostly for the armor piercing, so the mob that you have a hard time to kill because they have quite tanky or they have quite a lot of armor, 50% of your damage gonna ignore completely the armor. So that's really good. Try to shut down a single enemy like some bosses, but you need to have a good armor if you want to survive since it's all attack oriented. And right here, huge attack damage as you can see. Decent attack speed for what it is. And there's also the multi-use. I'm gonna show you all what I mean by that. Basically, you can also use like an axe, but from there, there's actually another trick. If you're using it correctly, it can be one of the best weapons in the game. And of course, there's the two hand. So that's it for the close range part. Now we're gonna go to longer range for the two hand weapons. Here, there's five of them. I include the bow and the crossbow, by the way, just uh, in the two hand since uh, you need two hand to be able to use them properly we got a great sword a really good when you're gonna do some dungeon or where there's multi enemies like the spawners or like battle towers when there's quite a few mobs that's gonna come you know to kill you it's gonna be quite good since you're gonna be able to eat multiple of them that are nearby also you can eat for away since it's the rich one and there's quite you know there's some good uh, stats uh, 1.2 attack speed 12 attack damage, it's the pike, um, it's the only weapon in the game that is actually the reach level 2, so you can hit the enemy even further away, uh, it's some good attack damage and some good attack speed, except the reach, it's a completely normal weapon, there's no effect whatsoever, it can be a, a viable uh, weapon if you want to keep your distance while still be able to do uh, uh, you know, a good amount of damage, we got a halberd, he is pretty special and before everyone's gonna find me in the comments because I wrote down it's unreliable let me you know explain first it's gonna give you a certain percentage basically it's gonna destroy the enemy shield that's why the anti shield is there the only problem with that is it's not a guarantee it's only a percentage so you're gonna have to be lucky and that's why I'm saying you, it's unreliable since you cannot predict if you're gonna be able to hit them when needed, you know. Yeah, you can hit further away. Great amount of attack damage, decent attack speed. Here, the bow and the crossbow. Basically, a quick comparison between the two of them. This one is when you're fighting multiple enemies or that you know you're gonna miss your shot. You can hit, you can shoot faster with this one than the crossbow because the crossbow you need to load during one second you're gonna need to aim during half a second while the other one it's 1.25 seconds total this one you know you are using arrows while this one the crossbow is using the bolts bolts are way more expensive to do it's really good to kill 
some boss that are harder to kill because they have a lot of there's more penetration with the crossbow depending on which bolt the iron one or the diamond one um, that you're gonna use you can use them to it further away like the range it's armor piercing 25% or 50 it's doing more damage uh, the problem in all of this is when you actually gonna do them it's one iron ingot for four bolts it's gonna be used quickly and it's the same for the diamond ones so it's that's why I'm saying it's a little bit more late game pretty much over with explaining all of the different like flame and dragon bones weapon there is last part the tips and tricks section as I said earlier the great sword what I was talking about the eight multiple target reach one so you're gonna be able to hit them from far away for example and as you can see I hit one zombie and those around him actually I mean got some damage here now it's the reach level one I'm just gonna show y'all uh, quickly so basically here but the reach level two it can hit them from here so and here it's like one block less i mean what i was talking about earlier basically the boomerang it's not gonna be able to hit all the enemies in uh, a line basically it's gonna hit the very first enemy and gonna come back so it's not like an aoe type of attack it's just the first one and while you throw it as you can see you don't have your weapon that i'm gonna show you all the throwable the big downsides i was talking about so first as you can see, when I throw it, there's a different time of uh, charging for each. When you throw them, it's going in a good direction, right? Uh, but when you actually hit the enemy with it, you can see it's actually bounced back from the enemy and, you know, come back towards you. The downside of all of that is it can hit you. And if it did, it's going to do the massive amount of damage. It's still doing the most damage in the whole game it's 36 when it's thrown so of you know it is a lot of damage also the downside of the throwable weapon is when you throw them too far away they're gonna despawn if you throw them and you die they're gonna despawn when you don't have any more ammo it's gonna take a spot as like a slot in your inventory but you are not gonna be able to use them at all and even when you're gonna try to hit like close range enemies uh, you are not gonna be able to you can see the numbers of uh, ammo that you have right right now this one is 16 8 uh, this one is there's only one so if you miss you're kind of screwed and the javelin there's four um, of course right now it doesn't you know lower the numbers since I'm in creative you got to be careful with that since for example with the javelin I throw it it hits you you can die and if you die the ammo you just use is gonna be lost forever. You cannot make any type of ammo. Uh, when you use your mount and you use a lens, it's gonna do more damage. For example, here 68, you hit, now it did 19. Uh, so you saw, like, normally it's written that you're gonna do, like, what, 7.5 attack damage. Uh, it was bad quality, but you understand that I did almost a triple of what I was supposed to do. Uh, since I was on my mount, if I'm not on my mount, I did only six damage. So there's quite a big difference in that. Is the importance of choosing the good weapon for and here? I'm not sure how to pronounce it. Sorry if I'm wrong. If you hit with a sword, it's like if you're hitting wood, you're not gonna do as much damage as you should. For example, I use a diamond sword. It's supposed to do seven damage. It did four only. The axe. It's really good now this one and that's why even the battle hacks is even more viable uh, option here since you can use it to fight and to cut down trees and since this mob is a tree you're gonna do a huge amount of damage but you're like you well yeah there was only 12 you know hp and left and it does 18 attack damage and he got more than 100 hp left 107 to be fair uh, now I'm gonna hit it once and see how much damage I'm gonna do. It did literally actually more than 50. It does quite a lot of damage. Why? Well, you know, if you're using axe 
to beat a, a tree-ish uh, mob, you're gonna do more damage than if you use a sword. The same thing with the Geonak. Geonak is basically our spawning. There's one percent chance when you're destroying uh, mineral uh, resources like uh, iron, diamond, whatever, to spawn, and they're gonna attack you. You use your sword. It did what 3.5 damage. So if you use the diamond pickaxe, it did 12 damage, but it's supposed to do only five. That's just the importance of you need to use the good weapon for the mob you're gonna hunt if you know it uh, in advance or if you know you're gonna go uh, mining sometimes instead of get your sword how it may be more useful to just get your pickaxe ready to fight since the gilonac for example are uh, weak against the pickaxe uh, that's pretty much it you know the deal if it helped you out uh, like comment subscribe a comments uh, if you have any question I'm gonna do my best to answer them as quickly as possible of course uh, join my discord down below I probably gonna do a summary of the whole video in a chart so like in a single picture so you're gonna be able to use them whenever you want without watching the full video once again since I know it's a pretty long video but I want to make sure to cover everything there was to be covered I also stream check in the description down below on my twitch Thank you for watching. Ciao.